Praise the Lord. Good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Welcome all the new guests this morning. Um, 1 Corinthians 13 verse 1 speaks about the love chapter. Let's read it. Let's listen to what the Word of God says. In verse 1 it says, If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am only a resounding gong, a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith, have a faith that can move mountains, but have not love, I gain, I gain nothing. I am nothing, Paul was saying. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames, I have not love, I gain nothing. Verse 4 says, Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no records of wrong. I want you to remember that one this morning, it keeps no records of wrong. Love does not Delight in evil, it rejoices in the truth, it always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be still. Where there are where there is knowledge, it will pass away. Let us bow our heads in prayer this morning. Let's pray. You pray for yourself and then pray for me. Lord, we Lord. all morning because the word of God speaks for itself <laughs> the word of God has just spoken to each and every one of us really I don't need to preach anything here this morning <laughs> the word is plain for us to understand we have just read a part of scripture that shows us thank you that tells us sorry that tells us and shows us what love should be really like. A part of scripture was uh, written, I don't know how many years ago, say 2,000 years ago, I don't know, exactly. It was written for a reason, and it's been read here this morning, for a specific reason. And today God wants to tell us and remind us what we should be like. You believe that? Amen. Amen. It's for a reason that God wants to always point us in the right direction. His word always wants to do that. How many believe that? Amen. We've just read about the love chapter we've read in verse 1 there. If I speak, Apostle Paul, a mighty man of God, is speaking here. If I speak in the tongues of men, 
and of angels. Now, I don't know what kind of a speaker you are this morning. Maybe your words is full of wisdom. Maybe your words is full of knowledge. Maybe you can chat the glass I to sleep. I don't know if that can be done, can it? <laughs> if I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, you may be a good speaker. I don't know. But if you have not love, Apostle Paul says, I am nothing. Let me tell you something. We are nothing this morning if we have not got love in our minds, in our hearts, in our minds. You are nothing. I am nothing. We are nothing. If we have not got love. No matter how good of a speaker I may be preaching God's word this morning, and you may think, well, he knows what he's on about. Let me tell you something. 99% I don't know what I'm about. I'm just a dumb witch sometimes. But God has took the dumb witch to confuse the wise. <laughs> In, when we read here, we read that what love is. Love is a four-letter four letter word. It's bigger than every other word love is. Even though it's only four letters, isn't it? It's bigger, much bigger than hatred. Would you agree with me with that? Amen. It is, it, is it easier to love than to hate? Many people in the world today would rather hate one another than love one another. You know, it takes more muscles in the face to frown than it does to smile. Amen. You know that? So when you laugh, I can't tell you what I laugh. So when you laugh, you're using up less muscles. But when you frown, you feel like more of that. Yeah? We've been there. We are all, all as we are doing, we're just making a noise. If we haven't got no love in our lives, in our hearts, and in our minds, we are making, we are just being a noise. That's what Paul says. Paul says, I'm just a resounding gong, a clanging cymbal. And he says, if I have the gift of, that, can, that can follow all mysteries, all... Yet if I have not love, I am nothing. And we are nothing. We've got to understand this morning that we are nothing without Christ. We are nothing without the love of God in our lives. Without Him, motivating us, guiding us, leading us, showing us the way, teaching us the way. We are nothing without Him. And we are nothing without the love of God in our lives. Amen. And you know when we get born again in the Spirit of God, we get to find out what love is, what real love is, how we can stick by a brother, how we can stick by a sister, and how we can love them like a, we can love a strange person that we can't understand sometimes that we do. Because we're born again in the Spirit of God, because we no longer belong to the devil, but we belong to Christ. It's essential that we need to love, have this love with the Lord, what the Word of God speaks about this morning. Verse 5, we read there, it is not self-seeking. It is not self-seeking. In the world today, we see two kinds of people. We see the one that's not a self-seeker, and we see the one that is a self-seeker. What is a self-seeking person? A self-seeking man or a self-seeking woman? What are they? What did he made of? How did he act? Well, all they're interested, all they're interested is in their self, to please the flesh. And the world today, sadly, is full of self-seeking people. And sadly, this morning, I hope not to, to believe this, that there may be self-seeking people who they're speaking this morning. In the time of Noah, there were self-seeking people. The world was full of them. 
But God was patient. He waited 120 years before the ship was ready to tell the people to repent of their sin. Noah's time and his generation was full of self-seeking people. Let's read that verse again. Verse 5. It is not rude. It is not easily angered. It keeps no records of wrong. And it is not self-seeking. In the time of Sodom and Gomorrah, we read the Word of God. It's in, the t in this time, there were self-seeking people. People that just wanted to do what they wanted to do, just wanted to live how they wanted to live, just wanted to please the flesh. But God was a God who wanted to save them people. When he talked with Abraham, he said, for the sake of 50 people, I will not destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. I will not destroy them. Because God loved them. And God loves us this morning, people. And he wants us to understand and to grab hold of this message. The word of God says, Jesus says out of his own mouth, in John 5, verse 35, he says, you will be recognized as my disciples because of what? Because of your love for one another. Amen. You will be recognized as my people, Amen. as my children, as those who are born again in the Spirit of God, as those who walk after my ways. You will be recognized as my people because of your love for one another. Amen. Love does not boast, it does not envy, it is not proud, it is not rude, it is not easy. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no records of wrong. I want you to get that into your mind this morning. Love keeps no record. The muskers do. <laughs> now the muskers are out there. You have been in trouble before. You have been in trouble with the police before. No? Somehow or another you hit to answer. No call. He's going to check me out. <laughs> find something again. But they keep a record of wrongs. None of rights. And sadly we are like that today. We can't be like that. I'm not saying you are. We can keep a record of wrongs. <coughs> Start a record and build it up and build it up and build it up. Right down in the little kitchen. He done this to me. She said that to me. I'm not going to hear him preach tonight because I don't like him. He looked at me funny. <laughs> He's pointing the finger at me. I lent him a fiver in the shop and he didn't give it back to me. <laughs> Just thank God it wasn't fifty. <laughs> keep a record of wrong does God want us to hold to keep a record of wrong of the wrongs that people do because I've been saved for 33 years if I get a piece of paper it will go out to the, to, the, to the roadway and write down every person who's let me down I can fill it oh yes I can fill it the people who's failed me but I can't have a record. I must, I must not have unforgiveness in my life, in my heart, in my mind. Because if I don't forgive, I cannot expect the Lord to forgive me. And we cannot. I was speaking to a man the other day, well, I don't forgive such a person. But he's coming to church. I said, you must forgive him. Forgive this person. Because unless you do, you will not be forgiven yourself. A record of wrong. Are you building a record? Have you got a record of wrong in your heart and in your life and in your mind today? As we're in this meeting, God wants us to know this message. He wants us to understand it. 
He wants us to apply it to our life. He wants us to grab hold of it. Why does he want to do that to us? Why does he want us to do that? Because it will make us into better people. We'd be a better man for God. We'd be a better woman for God. We'd make it one day to the kingdom of God. We'd bless people along the road, along the way, along the journey. But if we're keeping the record of wrongs, it'll, it'll make us bitter. It'll put an ugly look on our face. We'll be robbed of the joy of the Lord, the blessings of God upon our lives. We'll be robbed of them. And we know that John 10, 10 says that the thief comes to rob and to kill. And his job is to rob the things of God in our hearts. God wants the joy, wants us to have the joy of Him in our lives. He wants us to have His peace. He wants us to be the people that He's called us to be. But my brothers and my sisters, my friends, if you have a record of wrong in your heart, your heart has been corrupted slowly. You've allowed corruption, you've allowed bitterness to come in your heart. And bitterness starts as a seed. It starts with nothing, just a simple seed. Until it grows into something big. You know, I heard a man mention something about bitterness years ago, many years ago. And he said, what I've done, he said, I had a, I don't know if he owned it, he'd done it or, he, or somebody else. But there was a tree down the bottom of the garden. And he cut the tree down. He cut it down, but he couldn't get rid of the stump. And he said, I know what I'll do. A friend of, him, a friend of his mentioned, brought it up to him. He said, I know a man in a quarry, he said, has got some dynamite. He said, what we'll do, he said, we'll bore a hole in the bottom of the trunk. We'll push a stick of dynamite in it. And we'll blow the trunk to bits, the root. And we'll get rid of the root. And he goes and he does exactly that. He puts it, but he destroyed his greenhouse. <laughs> along the way. He blew out the bits as well. <laughs> but he got rid of the root. And what is the Holy Spirit when we apply the Holy Spirit to our lives? To the bitterness in our lives. What does he do? The Holy Spirit is known as dynamis power. Dynamite power. When we apply the Holy Spirit to our lives and say, Lord, come by your power. I don't want to be like, I don't want to be a man like this. I don't want to hold a record of wrong. I don't want to be destroyed by bitterness. Come by your power, by your Holy Spirit. And destroy the bitterness. Blow it up, Lord. Take it away, Lord. I want to be the man and the woman. You called me to be. And that's, what, that's the kind of God I serve. The kind of God I serve. Yeah, these people existed. They existed in the, in the time of Jonah when God, self-seeking people, I should say. They existed in the time of Jonah when God told Jonah to go to Nineveh. He went to tell these people because, he used Jonah to tell these people because he was concerned. And we serve a God who is concerned this morning about me and you. Don't be a self-seeker. See, don't merely look for the interest of yourself, the Bible says, but look also for the interest of others. Amen? Amen. 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 Romans, Romans 2 verse 8 says this. <coughs> but for those, it goes on, we read it verse, verse, verse 7. To those who by perseverance in doing good seek glory, honor, and immortality, he will give eternal life. We'll read that again. To those who, pers who persist, who by persistence in doing good seek glory, they seek glory and honor and immortality, he will give eternal life. But for those who are self-seeking and who reject the truth, 
and follow evil, there will be wrath and anger. There will be trouble and distress for every human being. Don't be a self-seeking person this morning, my brothers and sisters. Seek, but to please the Lord. Seek to please Him. Many, many people can say to me, and they'll say to one another, they'll say to your, to your face, I love God. And many people can re say that and believe that, I love God. But the scripture says, I want to read something in 1 John 4 verse 20. Whoever says, I love God, yet hates his brother or his sister, is a liar. The word of God tells us for what it is, isn't it? For whoever does not love him, their brother and, and their sister, whom they have seen, cannot love God whom they have not seen. What did we read? <coughs> love is patient, love is kind. It holds no record of wrong, it's not proud, it's not boastful. It always protects, it always trusts, it always hopes, it always perseveres. Love never fails. You know what? Love can keep a marriage together. Love can keep a relationship between a brother and a sister together in the Lord. Love can keep your relationship with Christ together. Love never fails. It never fails. Everything else will fail. Everything else will will let us down, but love will continue on. Love will stand. It will stand for eternity. What is, so what is God telling us? He said we need to love one another more. We need to take this on board this morning and, re and, and, and understand what God is saying. I want to turn to the Galatians 5. <coughs> Galatians 5. Remember now, brothers and sisters, people, and get rid of the record of wrong this morning. Get a spiritual lighter, hold it up like that, burn it before you leave the meeting. Because if you don't, you come in, you go out the same way you come in this morning. In verse 16 in chapter 5 it says, you see, the fruit of the Spirit tells us exactly how we should be. The Word of God here we spoke about love, tells us and shows us what love is, what it's not. It's not easy anger, it's not proud. You know the Bible says that pride goes before a fall. So when we're pride, full of pride, God can't, God can't honor them. God hates pride. He, he detests his pride, the Bible says. And pride goes before a fall. If you're a proud man or a proud woman, be careful because get ready to fall. Get ready to fall. Get rid of the pride. Get rid of the pride of your life and allow the love of God to show you mercy in your heart and in your mind for your brothers and your sisters and for people out there. So I, in verse 16, so I say, live by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. For the sinful nature are, and, and, and the sinful nature's desires what is contrary to the, to the Spirit. And the spirit, what is contrary to the, to the sinful nature, opposite, they're fighting against one, you have nothing in common. They are in conflict with each other. So that you do not do what you want, but if you are led by the spirit, you are, you are not on the law. See, we need, if we're led by the spirit this morning, it means you are led by the spirit. And, and how many knows that we can't please God unless we're led by the Spirit? We can't please the Lord in the flesh. We need to be led by the Spirit. What does the Word of God say? The kind of worshippers the Father seeks is those who worship. 
in spirit and in truth. Amen. That's why a man or a woman needs to be born again. They will never understand the things of God. They will never get to know the things of God. That's why we need to get born again of the Spirit of God, one of the reasons. The acts of the sinful nature are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, hatred. Don't you think about that? There's no love there. There's hatred. The acts of the sinful nature. Do you hate somebody this morning rather than love them? I'll ask that question again. Do you hate somebody this morning rather than love them? You know what? I hate everything about that man. I hate everything about that woman. Every time I see her, she despises me. I hate the look on her face. Don't go over and tear her eyes over it. <laughs> Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, sister, <coughs> jealousy. See, it's all the acts of the sinful nature, hatred and jealousies. Being jealous of one another. Does God want that? Most definitely not, does he? He doesn't want us to be jealous of one another. He wants us to, you know, maybe, maybe sometimes we can be jealous of but they're so good in God. Yeah, I want that. I can, get it, I can find this in a minute. I won't be like that. Bless my God, I thank you. Let's go praise the Lord. Selfish ambition. There go, hear that word again. Self-seeking, selfish ambition. It comes from the sinful nature. Dissensions, factions, and envy, and drunkenness, and the alike. I warn those, I warn you as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Oh, that's, that's serious, isn't it? That's dangerous, isn't it? So if we hate somebody, if we have a record of wrong, and there's no love in our lives, we've got to be careful because the Bible says, I warn those who live like this, that they will not inherit the kingdoms of God. Oh my God. Have I got to be careful how I live? Have I got to be careful in what I say and what the things I do? Have I got to apply this message to my life? Most certainly, yes, I have. If I want to get into the kingdom of God one day, I must do my best to make it into the kingdom of God. And I can't wait. Can't wait to get into the kingdom of God. I warn those, you see, there's a warning here. It reminds me of the time, and he's now there, the rich man is in hell at the moment, the rich man and Lazarus. He wanted the Lazarus to go to his father's house and warn them, a warning in the message, that they would not also come to this place of torment, where he now is. He now sits there, he waits in torment. And this message here says, I warn those who live like this, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. And But I like what it says in verse 22. It shows us how we need to be, what kind of people we need to be. I know we need to ask God to help us to love more. I believe that, because we're struggling, we're struggling. But if we look what the Word of God says, it's all there for us anyway. It's all there for us. Let's read it in verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. You see, why should I ask the Lord to say, Lord, help me love Tony. Help me love Mark. Help me love Steve. Why should I have to say that if I'm born again in the Spirit of God. If the Holy Spirit lives within me, which I know He does, why should I have to say that? Because one of the fruit of the Spirit, the first one, is love. Well. 
If I claim to be born again in the Spirit of God, if I claim to be a child of the living God, then love should be in me. It should manifest out of me. It goes on to say that the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no more. Amen. I don't want to be a man that's living in a sinful nature. Jesus has brought me out of that. I'm not going back into it. I know what it is. I know what it was like. I know what, where it will bring me. I know there's no peace there. I know there's no joy there. I'm not going back in there. Now I want to be led by the Spirit of the living God because I'm born again in the Spirit of God. You want to please God? Walk by the Spirit. You want to love the way the Word of God says love? Live by the Spirit. Apply the fruit of the Holy Spirit to your life. It should already be there if you're born again with the Spirit of God. We read it again, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience. We're patient with one another. We need to be patient with one another. Kindness. We need to be kind to one another. And we need to be self-control, gentleness, gentleness. We need to be gentle with one another. You know, there was a there was a great a great man who lived in this earth one time, David Jones. And that man showed me that much love. <coughs> when I was in long safe, that man had just wrapped his arms around him and, and, and encouraged him. I love you. And it stuck out to me. It stuck out to me like, like, like nothing ever happened to you like that before. And that's how we should be to one another. Kind, be kind to one another. Be considerate to one another. Caring for one another. Love one another. Because only by then will be known by the people of God, the disciples, who will be known as my disciples because of your love for one another. Don't say you love God if you hate your brother. Or you hate your sister. Don't say you love God and you, you honor God and you worship God if you have a record of wrongs. Don't say you love God if you're a self seeking person and seek for the interest of yourself. Don't say it. Because the Bible says, How can you say you love God who you haven't seen and hate your brother and your sister? How can you say you love God who you haven't seen hate your brother? Who you have, there's a problem. And there is. And there is. So you see, we need to be led by the Spirit of the living God. And showing the fruit of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, in our lives. Amen. Let's follow it.